one near and far. Welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Church of Delaware County's virtual worship. It is wonderful to be with all of you today. I want to first offer my thanks to our wonderful musicians today. You are all in for an incredible treat. So we have Ann Seidman, Jeanette Lynch, and Joy Thiessen as our musicians. And, and I heard them rehearsing, and uh, they just brought tears to my eyes. So thank you for being here today. Thank you also to all of our tech managers our, who are operating the AV system here today. We have Rich Karen Cross, Marilyn Huff, Don Sloat, uh, Patrick Stagel, and Craig Harris. It truly takes a village to, <laughs> to produce this, uh, this production for you. If you were here for the first time today or the first few times, I want to remind you that uh, on our website, you can register as a newcomer or a visitor, and that will put you on our mailing list so that you can find out about all the wonderful things that are happening at and around UUCDC at this time. That way you will know about uh, our in-gathering service, which is September 12th, and other things that will be happening later in the year. So just go to our website and you'll see a link for newcomers. I also want to remind you that if you are, um, if your Zoom name is not your real name and you want to change that on your screen so we know who you are while you're here, that would be appreciated. And it's great if you can turn on your camera if you're comfortable so that we can see your smiling face. Finally, I will uh, remind you that we have closed captioning available. If you press the CC button or live transcript button at the bottom of your Zoom screen, if that would be helpful for you, you can turn that on. And also, we have coffee hour after the service. So just hang on and you will be invited to join a breakout room and get to meet some people in smaller groups. So it is, again, wonderful to have all of you here this morning. And I invite you now to start worship. We are going to begin our worship this morning by reciting our covenant together that is printed on your screen. Enriched by our differences, and joined together in our search for meaning, we covenant with ourselves and each other to seek truth in a spirit of love, to strive for justice, and to serve others with a joyful heart. And I will light our chalice this morning. and invite you to light your chalices at home as well as I say these words. May the light we now kindle inspire us to use our power to heal and not to harm, to help and not to hinder, to bless and not to curse. Please join now in singing our centering song led by the UUCDC Virtual Choir.
as we sing that music together and hear our beautiful choir singing it, I just find myself settling in, settling down into this time of worship. I hope you do as well. Now is a time in which we share the joys and sorrows of our lives, the celebrations as well as those things that are weighing us down and burdening us on our, that we carry on our hearts. In sharing our celebrations, we share the joy with others, and in sharing our sorrows, we know that we are not alone and others can help share that load with us. While we are virtual, we share our joys and sorrows in the chat, and so I invite you now to share in the chat that which is lifting you up and that which is weighing you down. There is much for which we are grateful, those things that help to keep our spirits high and thriving. Let us relish those times. Let us also reach out figuratively to all those who are hurt, anxious, grieving, worried in this time. And now let us sing together our sung prayer, Spirit of Life, again led by the UUCDC Choir. Now is the time in our service where we gratefully receive your generous offering to support this church and its work in the world. We take that offering via text using your smartphones. If you would indicate how much you are offering and text it to the number shown on your screen, we are grateful for all of the gifts that you offer today. And as you do that, we are joined 
by Anne, Jeanette, and Joy offering mu their musical gifts. That is a song of hope, a song of anticipation. May the storm be passing over soon. May the storm that is approaching landfall in Louisiana pass over. May this pandemic pass over us as well. So I'm gonna offer you a little video again this morning. I've, I've taken to finding these videos and creating these videos rather than providing a reading because we have the technology available to us. Uh, this is a video that uh, demonstrates how people greet one another around the world. And I will be revisiting that question in my message. Oh, 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 
What a lovely greeting itself. Dona nobis pacem, grant us peace. I'd like to start my remarks today with a confession of sorts. Many of you know this about me already, but for those of you who don't, I'll just come right out and say it. I am a hugger. I'm a hugger. I am. I love to give and to get hugs. There's something about that human embrace where we literally meet heart to heart that makes me feel good as both the giver and the receiver. It may sound crazy, but it's one of the reasons that I left the legal world. I can tell you from experience, there is no hugging in the law. I honestly can't remember a time in the nearly 20 years before I went to seminary when we concluded a property transaction with a congratulatory hug all around. Handshakes, firm and brief, were the extent of human contact in the legal world. So as a hugger, I've been seriously deprived over the past 18 months. Of course, my wife and my kids and grandkids have been great sources of hugs during the pandemic, but one of the things that I miss the most is standing at the top of the stairs in the lobby right out there here in the church and greeting all of you with a hug on Sunday mornings. And I long for the day when we can return to that. But in the between time that we experienced over the summer, when things were opening up, it seemed, but we weren't quite through the pandemic before the fourth wave happened. It was kind of confusing. Before things got worse, we encountered each other in a kind of post-pandemic awkwardness. Were you like me when you came across someone you knew but hadn't seen in a while? My first impulse, of course, was to spread my arms wide and invite them into a long embrace. Oh, that would feel so good. But then I had to pull back and rein myself in. Would the other person want a hug? Did it feel safe to them? Was it safe for me? Or would we both feel threatened by it? And if not a hug, then what? Was a handshake okay? Or was even that too much contact? Should we go back to that weird and unsatisfying maneuver we seemed to engage in by default earlier in the pandemic, where we, we touched elbows like a couple of awkward, overgrown chickens? Now, all this might just sound silly to even be talking about right now, trivial in the grand scheme of things, while the world is literally on fire and drowning. But I don't think so because how we greet each other matters. It's about making that connection. Sometimes the first connection or maybe the first time we renew a long lost connection with another human being. If there's one thing we've come to realize through this pandemic, it's that we can't take those connections, those contacts with our fellow human beings for granted. For the past 17 months, we've been unable to be in close proximity to each other, isolated in whatever bubbles we've established. Because we're built to be in relationship, we've all taken a serious hit, emotionally, physically, spiritually. Theologian and philosopher Martin Buber concisely described our need for those connections when he wrote that all living is meeting. All living is meeting. And now more than ever, when we've been deprived for so long, we feel that acutely. By that definition, that all living is meeting, even those of us who have survived the pandemic have been robbed of an essential element of our humanity. Now to pull on this thread a little more, Martin Buber went on to talk not just about being in relationship, but how we are in relationship with each other and with the world. He framed our relationships as falling into two basic categories, I-it relationships and I-thou relationships. 
I, it encounters are impersonal and transactional in nature. Think of them as more superficial, where the two parties sort of glance off each other like two billiard balls. In contrast, I-thou relationships, I-thou encounters are those where we recognize and appreciate each other's full humanity. One commentator describes the I-thou encounter this way. The I-thou relationship is characterized by mutuality, directness, presentness, intensity, and ineffability. When one meets another as thou, this writer said, the uniqueness and separateness of the other is acknowledged without obscuring the relatedness or common humanness that is shared. If most of our encounters are of the I-it variety, we're robbed of our humanity. Our lives feel empty and without purpose. We are emotionally stifled and unsatisfied. Now, Martin Buber never contemplated a global pandemic that would force us to quarantine for months at a time, but I'm guessing that he would put most Zoom meetings and Zoom parties and maybe even Zoom worship as encounters of the I-it variety. Despite our best intentions and our most earnest desire to establish deep, meaningful connections across the miles, it's hard to overcome the barrier that physical distance poses to move from the I-it to the I-thou. And while he never said so, I think Martin Buber assumed that to create and sustain I-thou relationships, relationships where we see the holy in the other, where we come to a deep appreciation for another's humanity and our own, we need to be with each other. We need to be able to look in each other's eyes, to see each other not just as disembodied heads on a computer screen, but as a whole person where we share the same space, breathe the same air, perhaps where we can be close enough to reach out and actually touch one another, where our meeting is skin to skin. I'm not saying it's impossible to have an I Thou encounter over Zoom. Lord knows we've all tried our best to maintain our sense of connection through this pandemic. But there's a reason remote engagements using video technology leave us feeling unsatisfied or even depressed. So back to the question of how we greet each other when we're finally sharing the same physical space. During the height of the pandemic, Dr. Dr. Anthony Fauci famously said, I don't think we should ever shake hands ever again, to be honest with you. The handshake, which can take a variety of forms, as we saw in our video a few minutes ago, is deeply embedded in our Western DNA. Putting aside the question of how it spreads, spreads germs, or as one author put it, it is sheer recklessness to indiscriminately touch other people's dirty paws. I would assert that the handshake is the very epitome of an I-it encounter. Even if we ignore the origins of the handshake, which date back to the fifth century BC, where parties extended their open right hand to demonstrate that they intended a peaceful encounter by showing that they weren't carrying a weapon. Even if we ignore that background, I'd say the modern handshake is about as transactional as you can get. It bears no weight no commitment one to the other. It's a formality. Alternatives to the handshake, I think, are equally fraught. There's the bow, which we could borrow from Asian cultures. But for me, bowing feels overly formal and requires that we stay at a distance from each other. Bowing also conveys a feeling of subservience that probably would prevent it from catching on particularly in American culture. The namaste greeting is attractive to many of us. Although it's been co-opted from Hindus by Western yogis and plenty of new age types, whenever I use namaste, I feel like I'm engaging in an act of cultural misappropriation, sticking out our tongues at each other in greeting. We saw that too 
Tibetan monks use that as a greeting. That, that to me, is just a non-starter, given the fact that most of us use that gesture of, as a gesture of disrespect when we were kids, not to mention that it would be invisible if we're still wearing masks. I have to admit that I really like the traditional Maori greeting, where two people touch foreheads and noses while looking into each other's eyes. There's an intensity and intimacy in that gesture that I think opens the door to an I, thou encounter in a way that a handshake or a bow doesn't. But I think for health and safety reasons, it's probably not a good idea these days to get quite that close. Then I was thinking back to uh, about 10 years ago, the movie Avatar. Do you remember the movie Avatar? In that movie, the fictitious residents of Pandora, called the Navi, greeted each other with both a gesture and with words. As they first touched their own heart and then placed their hand on the chest of the other, they said the words, I see you, I see you. They met and acknowledged not just the other's physical presence, but their beingness, their essence, and how they were both connected heart to heart. The Pandoran greeting was not quite a hug, but it's way more than a handshake. Any physical contact, even as simple as a handshake and certainly a hug, requires consent. Let's never forget that. And in the age of coronavirus, it's complicated by the threat and fear of infection. At least for now, we probably got to resign ourselves to refraining from any gesture that requires touching. So here's what I've come up with in thinking about this. I want to offer you a new kind of greeting that, that I've never seen before, but it's close to some that we have seen. When I see you, what I'm going to do is place my hand on my heart and then extend my right hand, opening my heart to yours. Here, you have my heart. Try that. How does that feel to you? You have my heart. You don't need to say the words, but I don't know. I like, I like the feel of that. When my hand is here, I can feel my own heart, and then it is, is extended to you. So when we next see each other, I invite you to think about that as the encounter. Jeanette, when I saw you this morning, we did the virtual hug thing, right? We did that dance, right? How about this? I admit it's not a hug, and it won't feel the same as that holy embrace, but it's the best that I can come up with right now. In the weeks and months ahead, May we all find ways to open our hearts to each other, to see the sacred in each other's eyes, to open the door to an I, thou encounter. You, all of you are my thou, and may I also be yours. Blessed be. Amen. So, shall we sing again? Let us, no, not you guys yet. Well, you can sing along, but we're going to sing Come and Go With Me. The words are on your, on your screen, and you will be joined and led by our virtual choir.
invite you now to extinguish the flame of your chalice as I extinguish ours here in the sanctuary and say together the words printed on your screen. Although we now extinguish our chalice flame, may we hold its warmth in our hearts in all the days ahead. We have a special treat. We have a, one more musical offering by Anne, Jeanette, and Joy. They are going to offer us all a Gaelic blessing before we say our benediction together. lovely thank you thank you thank you for your music today Jeanette and Joy it is so lovely to see you thank you to also to all of the folks who made our technology possible today Don Patrick Craig Rich Marilyn Juniper Ariel Mary Clinton all here helping us out to put this together put this service together and bring it to you I would remind you at the end of our service, we will have breakout rooms for coffee hour. But now I invite you to unmute yourself and join with me in saying our benediction together. For those who those come here seeking God, 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 God those who come to the life of life, 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 <laughs> That's what's missing now huh, is the people. Right. Even I feel it. Oh yeah. Join the Zoom account or the Zoom room. It's up to you later.